Welcome, I'm glad you're here. I used to coach Yancey Jr.'s basketball team when he was in fifth and sixth grade. His team name was the Purple Piranhas. We were known for our defense. They worked hard and they played hard. Um, but one of the things that we would work on every practice, every game, uh, was passing and just learning how to get better as a team. So during one of the scrimmages, I instituted a rule and the kids were not happy with me, but I told them you get two dribbles, then you have to, then you have to pass. Unless you're underneath the basket for a great shot, um, you get two dribbles and you have to pass. And what turned out to be as a great frustration for the kids individually actually made us better as a team. And we got better. And I, want, I say that story just to encourage you today because many of us are find ourselves trapped at home, in, under confinement, under stay-at-home rules. And I want to encourage you, don't let those limitations um, hinder your growth. Um, we can still grow um, in these confinements, just doing different things. We're, we're called to think differently now. And so I want to encourage you. There may be something right now in this new context in which you, be, you can become a strategic, a strategic student and an eventual expert if you keep at it. It can turn out to be something positive for you, positive for your family, positive for your team, uh, for your workplace. Who knows? Because I'm here to tell you today that, that this epidemic, this pandemic that we're going through right now, it won't last forever. I don't believe it will last forever. God is not ignorant to plagues. God knows about plagues and he's dealt with plagues before. I was reading in Numbers chapter 16 this week. And if you want to turn there, you can. And as I was reading uh, this here, Numbers chapter 16, there was a rebellion. It was a rebellion against Moses and his leadership. God was executing judgment upon a man named Korah and his family. And the earth had just swallowed, swallowed him up and his family. And the scripture tells us in verse 41, number 16, verse 41, that the very next morning, the whole community of Israel began muttering against Moses and Aaron, saying, you've killed the Lord's people. As the community gathered to protest against Moses and Aaron, they turned to the, toward the tabernacle and they saw that the cloud had covered it and the glorious presence of the Lord appeared. Understand, understand when you're seeing the presence of the Lord, this is, this is ominous, this is huge, this is holy, this is, this is, this is frightening. This is God himself. And the scripture tells us that Moses and Aaron came and stood in front of the tabernacle. And the Lord said to Moses, get away from all these people so that, so that I can instantly destroy them. But Moses and Aaron fell face down on the ground. And Moses said to Aaron, quick, take an incense burner and place burning coals on it uh, from the altar. Lay incense on it and carry it out among the people and purify them and make them right with the Lord. The Lord's anger is blazing against them. The plague has already begun. Aaron did as Moses told him and ran out among the people. The plague had already begun to strike down the people, but Aaron burned incense and purified the people. He stood between the dead and the living and the plague stopped. But 14,700 people died in that plague, in addition to those who had died in the affair of all, of involving Korah. Then because the plague had stopped, Aaron returned to Moses at the entrance of the tabernacle. It was an incredible sight. The presence of the Lord was standing there. Um, Moses and Aaron came and they were standing between the living and the dead. Um, I was thinking about this because when God gave his law to, uh, to the people of Israel, his first primary concern was, was for worship before it ever became a moral issue. God gave uh, these instructions to his people so that he could, he could meet with them, so that he could be with them. So, so when I think about this and how, how did Moses know what to do when the plague started to break out? There was something that Moses knew about the presence of God. There's something he had discovered about living, uh, uh, about the power of living in the presence of God. And so when I researched it a little bit more, I was taken to Exodus chapter 30, if you want to turn there. And there's three things I want to highlight um, about how Moses learned uh, about the power of living in God's presence. In Exodus chapter 30, there's three things I want to share with you. 
I'll tell you them right now. One of them is the is the incense altar, the anointing oil, and the incense itself. Let's let's read about these three things real real quickly here. In Exodus chapter 30, verse 1, these were instructions for making the incense altar, and it would be placed in front of in, in, in the holy place, in front of the curtain to the most holy place, which behind that curtain would have been the Ark of the Covenant. The scripture says, then make another altar of acacia wood for burning incense. Make it 18 inches square and 36 inches high with horns at the, at the corners carved from the same place of wood, same piece of wood as the altar itself. Overlay the top size and horns of the altar with pure gold and run a gold molding around the entire altar. Make two gold rings and attach them on opposite sides of the altar below the gold molding to hold the carrying poles. Make the poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. Place the incense altar just outside the inner curtain that shields the Ark of the Covenant in front of the Ark's cover. The place of atonement that covers the tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant. And I will meet you there. Wow. In this moment, God is describing to Moses what was necessary, what, what God wanted them to do in order to meet with them. Meeting with the Holy God is dangerous. Nothing can stand in the presence of the Holy God. No human being can stand in the presence of, the, of a Holy God without some kind of sacrifice. We're too sinful. Scripture talks about how God is like a consuming fire. Who can stand in his presence? Yet God, through the Old Testament law here, is showing Moses, is giving instructions, literally giving instructions to his people of how they can relate to each other, how they can interact with each other. And even in this instance, it was only going to be one holy priest that would be able to even get this close to God. It says, every morning when Aaron, when Aaron maintains the lamps, he must burn fragrant incense on the altar. And each evening when he lights the lamps, he must again burn incense in the Lord's presence. This must be done from generation to generation. Do not offer any unholy incense on this altar or any burnt offerings, grain offerings, or liquid offerings. Once a year, Aaron must purify the altar by smearing its horns with blood from the offering made to purify the people from their sin. This, this will be a regular annual event from generation to generation, for this is the Lord's most holy altar. You gotta understand the altar is the place where, where, where man meets God, is where humanity meets God. God loves us so much that he wanted to have a relationship with his creation. He wants to have a relationship with us. And so he made provision for his very holy nature um, in order to be able to come in contact with a very fleshly and, earth, and earthy uh, humanity. And it was going to be through, through this, through, through, through these ways. And understand that everything here in the Old Testament regarding the tabernacle and, and all of its, its uses was actually going to be pointing to something better through the sacrifice of Jesus. You see, in Jesus Christ, all of the Old Testament is pointing to something better through Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on the cross. It's, only, it's his sacrifice. This is the only sacrifice that allows us to stand in the presence of a holy God. But in the Old Testament here, regarding this plague, this is how Moses understood um, the presence of God. One of, the, one of the ingredients of experiencing the presence of God for Moses had to do with this, with this incense altar. Then we jump down in the verse, into the a uh, little bit later in the chapter. In verse 22, uh, the Lord starts giving instruction regarding the anointing oil. And it's a, it has a fragrance of, uh, made up from, from uh, some ingredients like myrrh and cinnamon and fragrant calamus and acacia and olive oil. And he tells Moses this, he says, he says, like a skilled incense maker, blend these ingredients to make a holy anointing oil. Use the sacred oil to anoint the tabernacle, the Ark of the Covenant, the table and all its utensils and the lampstand and all its accessories, the incense altar, the altar of burnt offering and all its utensils and the wash basin with its sand. Consecrate them to make them absolutely holy. After this, whatever touches them will also be made holy. Understand that, that you can only imagine how 2.4 million people being coming out of Egypt through the Red Sea, um, coming along with, with farm animals. I can only imagine the smells, the smells that would have been, the pungent smells that would have been 
happening among uh, that many people. Yet to have um, a special anointing oil to, to mark those things which belong to God, those things which are separated to God, not just on the utensils, but also the priests themselves would also be anointed with the, with the holy anointing oil. When the priest would walk through the community, you could smell the anointing oil. And it would be a reminder of the, uh, to the people that there was a living God who was living amongst them. Um, and that he set things, he set people apart for his purposes. Just through Jesus Christ, he has set us apart for his purposes in this world. He has still set us apart, even amongst this plague that we're living in. God has still set his people apart. God has set you apart in this plague, in this epidemic, this pandemic that we're in right now. We can't forget that God has still set us apart for such a time as this. And we've got to remember that just today. Moses knew there was something about the presence of God coming in contact with this plague. Um, God gave him instructions concerning the incense altar, the anointing oil. And then read the, the, in this section in, about the incense. About the incense, In verse 34, Then the Lord said to Moses, Gather fragrant spices, resin droplets, mollusk shell, uh, galbanum, and mix these fragrant spices with pure frankincense weighed out in equal amounts. Using the usual techniques of the incense maker, blend the spices together and sprinkle them with salt to produce a pure and holy incense. Grind some of the mixture into a very fine powder and put it in front of the Ark of the Covenant, where I will meet with you in the tabernacle. You must treat this incense as holy. Never use this formula to make this incense for yourselves. It is reserved for the Lord and you must treat it as holy. Anyone who makes incense like this for personal use will be cut off from the community. Again, we see that phrase, where I will meet with you in the tabernacle. You see, when the priest was the, the anointed priest would go into the, into the holy place, he would literally, there was already a smell because he, of the anointing oil, but understand that when he, when he lit the incense, understand that this is a new aroma made possible through combustion, made possible through through fire. It was something different. It was something you could only smell if there was combustion, if there was fire. And I'm here to tell you that, that you have been anointed. We as God people have been anointed through Christ to be able to stand in the gap of this plague. But that some of us need to be reminded that that there is there is an anointing. There there is an incense that God wants to produce in us, a spiritual incense in the middle of this plague. Um, that would welcome the presence of God in the middle of this. There's something Moses knew uh, that would happen when the plague came in contact with the presence of God. Nothing can survive in the presence of God. No human being can stand in the presence of God without, without a sacrifice. And we have that sacrifice in Christ Jesus. God gave his people instructions that, that he might be able to meet with them where I will meet with you in the tabernacle. You understand, You got to understand this, that, that God knew that life is going to break us. Going through life, life goes sideways all the times, and, and we get broken mentally, emotionally, physically. Uh, we, many of us can count the number of bad days that we've had. Um, and, and having a bad day is not, God, not good. God, God knew that life, life is going to break you. But at the same time, God also knew that meeting with God every day is going to make us whole. Let me say that again. Life is going to break you, but meeting with God every day can make you whole. And it's this presence of God that deals with the fear. It deals with the anxiety. It deals with the brokenness. It helps us to live to live holy in relationship with Him, even in a context where things seem to be falling all around us. And that is the peace we have with God in the context we live that even in the middle of a storm, we can we can we have stability. We have a rock upon which we can stand because our God, because we're learning how to live life in the presence of God, learning how to discover the power of living in God's presence. Moses knew the power of living in God's presence. He knew that it would break the plague. We need to know that as well. We need to learn that as well. The power of God's presence. Learning, learning about the power of of living life in the power of God's presence can be a game changer for you. It can be a game changer in your marriage, a game changer in your family, a game changer for your circumstances, a game changer. I know he's been a game changer for, 
for, for, for our lives individually. But, but this is big now. We have a pandemic. But, but I'm here to tell you today, if the spirit of the living God is really with us, shouldn't we expect God to show in big ways? I believe he can eradicate this coronavirus. That, that we serve a God that if, 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 if we can just invoke his presence and stand in the gap between the living and the dead, that we can see, I declare in the name of Jesus, that we can see this plague be stopped and halted in his tracks in the name of Jesus. Not because of who we are, but because of who he is and what he's accomplished for us in the cross. We serve a mighty God today. And I believe that, that by discovering the power of living God's presence, it could be a game changer for the world and for us today. When God gave his people these, these commands of, of learning how to regularly meet with, with, with God in his presence and, and how they would relate to him, I believe there's a lesson for us that if we learn to regularly live life every day in God's presence, that when it actually comes to the big things, um, we'll actually be able to take God's presence into the midst of some of the greatest challenges we would ever face, believing that what God has done for us in the little things, God can do for us in the big things. God has touched my life in so many ways, and, and I try to do my best at count my, uh, counting my blessings, realizing how God has met with me in so many little things. And it's that, that pattern of, of seeing God's faithfulness in my life in, in so many little things that I'm believing God can, God's going to be faithful in the big things as well. I believe God wants to be faithful in the big things of all of our lives together and that he can be faithful in the middle of this coronavirus. There's something powerful about living in the presence of God and discovering the power of his presence. When we come to worship um, and we actually gather together, we bring our worship team, we start singing. You know, it's, it's my hope that, that as we're praising God and we're worshiping him, that there's the, we're praying for that moment where, where God comes and touches a person's life and it doesn't matter what's going on. All of a sudden, they found this freedom. Freedom that's only found in the presence of God. And in that moment, they have found peace, they have found joy, they have found love, they have found acceptance. I believe God wants to do that on a global scale today. I believe God wants to reveal himself to you this week in ways perhaps you've never experienced before. Would you open your heart to him? Do we need more people? Do we need, do we need a greater move of God in our lives right now? Do we need, need a greater move of God in our world right now, in our churches right now? I believe we do. I believe we do. I believe we also need a greater number of people. Do you believe we need a greater amount of people that are willing to stand at the gap and bring the presence they are experiencing with God in their personal lives into the world through the power of the Holy Spirit? Do you, are you one of those? Have you experienced God's presence? Do you believe the Holy Spirit can be poured out in your life even more and spill out into the world around us to stop this plague? We need to stop this plague. Do we need to stop? Do you believe this plague needs to stop and that it can be stopped by the power of God? Then will you, if that's you, would you agree with me right now? Can we just pray and just ask God's presence to come? Father, in the name of Jesus, I totally believe right now that you can bring a stop to this plague, that you can, you can mandate a turnaround. I know we have leaders around the world trying to make decisions and we have doctors searching for a cure, but right now we're, we're leaning upon your presence right now. I pray right now for, for those that are praying with me that, that we would come together as one voice in relationship with you, Lord, and that you would be glorified, that you would hear us today, Lord, hear our prayers right now, Lord God, and that in the name of Jesus, would you first of all just bring healing to those that are affected right now by that coronavirus Bring healing to their, to their being right now, to their bodies. And we pray against this infectious disease and ask that it would be stopped in the name of Jesus, Lord. And even beyond that, Lord, would you, would, would you do even far more than what we're asking? We're praying right now, Lord, for, for those that may need a physical touch right now. I'm praying for them right now. Their mind, their body, and their spirit. Would you, would you bring healing? If that's you today, just... just Extend your heart, your hand out to God today. Let him touch your life today in Jesus' name. Bring healing, Lord. Bring health. Bring wholeness, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for those that, that may have been dealing with, with fear and anxiety um, in just a difficult situation for a long time. Lord, they need deliverance today. They need deliverance today. If that's you, just, just know that God hears your prayer today. Put your faith and your trust in him today because God loves you. 
he's reaching out to you. He wants to know that he's got a purpose. He's got a plan for your life. You're not forgotten today. He sent his son. He sent me to tell you that he sent his son to die upon the cross for you today so that you could find freedom, that you can find forgiveness from your past, your painful past, a hurtful past, maybe a shameful past as well. The good news is that God sent his son that we may live in right relationship with him today. I'm going to ask each and every one of us today, perhaps you're here today, um, you need a fresh start. Maybe you just need to declare your faith today in him and reaffirm your trust in him. Can we say this prayer together? Dear Jesus, today I invite you into my heart. I'm sorry for my sins. I've disappointed you way too many times. But I believe you died for me. You died on the cross for me. And you were raised from the dead. And I believe you're up in heaven right now, sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pouring out your spirit on those who will receive you. Today, I receive you into my life. Come into my heart. Let your spirit fill my life and help me to live a life that is pleasing for you. Let the anointing rest upon me. Let me experience your presence right now. May your presence come upon your people right now, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord. In Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Listen, if you said that prayer today, I want you to know that God, is, God has entered into your heart today. The Bible says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And if you've received Christ today, um, Hey, you can send me an email. Send me an email at pastoryancy at me.com. Let me know. Let me know where you're at today. Let me know how I can be praying for you. I want to follow up with you and make sure that you have what you need to be able to continue to grow in your relationship with Christ in Jesus' name. Um, before we go today, um, I want to take a moment just to thank all of our prayer partners for, for just praying for, this, praying for this service, praying for this message. We're doing things different. This is not the way we normally do church. Um, so I want to pray for, our, thank you for our prayer partners. And I want to pray for our financial partners today. I want to pray for finances today. I know everyone, we're just kind of navigating through this. Um, if you are visiting for the first time, please know, um, I would, if you were here with us, I don't feel obligated like you have to give. We want our service uh, to be a gift to you. But I do want to pray for those that sow seed into this ministry. And, and, even, and then right after that, I want to pray for your week today. So we let me do that today. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for our prayer partners. Thank you for our financial partners, those that have given online, those that have sowed seed into this ministry. Lord, I pray for them today. I ask your blessing to be upon their lives, their finances. Um, give us wisdom and how we can navigate and, uh, and help us, Lord. Help them, Lord God, so that they can continue to be a blessing in the lives of others. Bless their, their workplaces. Bless their financial situations in Jesus' name. And I just pray, Lord God, um, for those that have, that have tuned in this week, that you give us a great week. Give us a great week, Lord. Um, there's nothing better that we could have done than to begin the week than by being in church and just sharing God's word together. I pray, Lord God, that you'd bless them, you'd keep them, you'd make your face shine upon them and be gracious to them. Lift up your countenance upon them and give them peace. May the name of the Lord our God be upon your people whom you promise to bless. I pray our day, our week, our lives would be thoroughly filled with the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and that we would know that we serve an awesome God who desires to bring out the bestness for life and ministry. We love you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. All God's people said, amen, amen. God bless you. I, hey, I hope you have a great week. Uh, shoot me an email. Let me know if, if, if you want to say hello. Just, just shoot me an email, email pastoryancy at me.com. Hope you're having a great week, and we'll talk to you soon. God bless you. Take care.